Ross uh, finishes up with a good question. My question relates to bus bench versus park bench training. So in my world, we use the word bus bench when we're talking about a workout. Um, it's got a clear start, clear finish. Um, you're expected to be able to do something at the end of the time. Uh, if it doesn't work, you should be able to complain to somebody about it. And park bench training is when you kind of show up and you get the workouts in, you just show up and keep doing them. Uh, in my humble opinion, I think park bench workouts are far better than bus bench workouts for most of us most of the time. You recommend mostly park bench training oh, yeah, with the bus bench mingle in maybe twice a year for the average non-athlete in good health. My question pertains to the rite of passage as discussed in Enter the Kettlebell by Pavel and also the program discussed in The Return of the Kettlebell. Both programs have specific strength goals, goals as the minimum program requirement, but both talk about potentially taking a really long time to achieve. Would sticking with the rite of passage protocol until I can press a bell half my body weight be detrimental, de detrimental in the way sticking with a bus bench program too long could be? Or is the program, which is mostly volume based and waving loads, be considered closer to park bench programs? Additionally, is it okay to have a specific strength goal with park bench training? Well, okay, so let's go to that first question first. Um, that last question first, I discovered in my life that unless there's three officials, uh, a crowd, a weigh-in, singlets, cards, uh, entry fees, it's not worth my time to chase maxes. Okay. I like to only max in competition. And the reason is, is because if you have the park bench mentality like I do, um, you want to always have enough in reserve, mentally reserved and physical reserve, that if the competition demands it, I can add more weight and have a run at it. So I think you can have a specific strength goal with park bench training, but you just have to kind of remember that, you know, not every day is perfect, not every situation is perfect. You just have to have with it a, a, a little bit of, uh, you know, you know, Cervantes, he didn't say it in Don Quixote, he said another word, but it's it's the road, not the inn. So the thing about the park bench mentality is you gotta you gotta fall in love with the road. You gotta fall in love with the process. And when you do, you you stop focusing on I gotta do this, and you start focusing on, yeah, that's good. I feel good about doing it. This feels good. So to get to your big question about things like the rite of passage. You know, I've done the rite of passage. I've done, I've done uh, uh, the workouts in, uh, you know, uh, Return of the Kettlebell. In fact, you'll, you know, you'll see my name, I think, in both books. I think. I wrote the foreword to Enter the Kettlebell. And a lot of my material is in the, the, the second book. Um, one thing I think a lot of people missed, Ross, and it still bothers me. and the, the, doesn't keep me up at night, but it bothers me. Before you moved on to the next, the Return of the kettlebell program, that double kettlebell, Pavel expected you to be able to pass the Secret Service Snatch Test, which is 24 kilo bell, 200 reps in 10 minutes, and you should be able to press rather easily the uh, the 106 or the Beast, the, the 106 pound, 48 kilo bell called the Beast. Uh, when I did it, uh, I pressed the Beast first just to get it out of the way. Because I knew that if I got 100 reps with the 20, uh, pardon me, 200 reps with the 24, I wasn't going to be too interested in doing anything else for a couple, uh, couple of days. That was a standard he put in there. Now, can you get those goals by just doing the rite of passage? Well, that's what I did. Uh, I was, um, this is a while ago, and eh, not terribly long time ago, but a while ago. And I was getting ready for the RKC in San Jose. And then I was an assistant at the UCLA one. And then I was, and then I went up to, I think, Minnesota next for another one. And I was using the rite of passage as a means for me to have my hands on kettlebells three plus times a week and have a program that would support passing the snatch test, being able to demonstrate all the moves and, you know, keep myself in reasonable shape. So the rite of passage can be used in that style like I did, where you come in, if you feel great, uh, 
And don't forget, I tried to do the rite of passage with the 36. And I got to tell you, I, I, you know, Mike Brown still makes fun of me about trying to do that. Um, <laughs> but my thinking on doing the 36 was, since I had already gotten myself to, to, to master all that other stuff. And by the way, when I did the rite of passage, it was always with the 28. That's the only thing I did the rite of passage with. But by sliding to the 36, my thought was, let's see what can happen if I just do clean and press, clean and press. Um, the problem was, uh, it's really hard with the 36 to get those ladders of one, two, three, four, five in. Um, my right side, my stronger side, seemed to have little, little issue, but my left side, it did. So I'm hoping you understand what I'm trying to make with my point here. If you're using the 24 with the rite of passage and you're going to go to several certs back to back to back, you want to be in good kettlebell shape back to back to back, it can park bench itself. If, however, you're chasing a dream, a tra chasing a goal, it slides over to park bench. Most good programs are both. It just depends on what you're, you're kind of trying to do, okay, what you're, what you're chasing. Um, I think the rite of passage, uh, especially if you use the very a variety of days intelligently. Um, I remember the one time I decided to do barbell deadlifts and Turkish getups, um, and that actually worked pretty well. So, you know, I had a heavy rite of passage day, a medium rite of passage day, uh, a light rite of passage day, deadlift and Turkish getups. Um, I felt like I was really in a good place to coach at the certs um, and to and to you know survive the certs. So when when I did that, I think that was probably the best way for me to stay in kind of teaching conditioning. Okay, teaching teaching can be really hard, folks. It it can be to be on for three straight days in the sun, getting burned up with you know especially the way things used to be. Our dinners wouldn't even start until 10 o'clock at night. You, know, you, you get to bed at one and you got to be up at six or five. So I could be the first in the field because that's what I was expected to do. Lucky me. To be in that kind of shape, it takes a program like that. All programs, just kind of remember that. I, I don't know if the West Side guys would agree, but you could probably put together a West Side program that tends to be a little bit more park bench. You know, even as I said that, I thought about Jim Wendler's 531, which you can do uh, like my brother has. I think he's, my brother Gary has been doing it eight to 10 years. That's a long time to do a program. That's a long time. But he's very park benchy. He's uh, just turned 75. He's a hammer throw and he's doing great. Uh, that's. But you could also take that same program and just go, okay, we're going to get ready, you know, for football season and turn it into a, uh, a bus bench program. Like almost anything in life, you know, one or two aspirins will probably help you with whatever issue you're facing. One or 200 aspirins will probably make you have real tummy, tummy issues and maybe even end up somewhere, you know, like, like an ambulance or something. So it's always in the dosage and the focus. Um, but that's a good question, Ross. Um, you could probably do the, ex to me, like I could be in the same gym with you, watching you do your rite of passage. And I might not even see when you jumped to wire it up to a bus bench program from a park bench. Okay. That's a good question. And I really appreciate it. Okay.